Hey, as we continue looking at furnace faith, and which we're beginning to take up again, we, we left off because I was in quarantine for a while, and we're taking that back up, looking at furnace faith and what it means to be having faith in the midst of pressure, um, under fire, so to speak. We've looked at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and we looked at Abraham, and this week we're looking at Paul and his thorn in the flesh and his faith regarding that continuous thorn that was with him. And as we look at this, um, the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians talks about this thorn in the flesh. And he is preceding what we're going to be looking at. He is entering into what is called a, a speech of character. And that means that he is taking on a persona and he is talking as if he is a third person. Uh, it was a rhetorical device that was used. And at Corinth, there was this idea that, that um, at Corinth prided itself on being more Roman than Rome. And one of the characteristics of Roman um, culture was that people were expected, men especially, were expected to have a list of things that they had accomplished, uh, accomplishments that they had done, uh, offices that they had held, uh, things that they had accomplished, and everybody would say, "Woo, you've done a great job. How marvelous. And so it was almost like a bragging on yourself. It was almost, a, but it was a list of accomplishments. And so there was this expectation in Corinth that, well, Paul doesn't really have a list of accomplishments. He really doesn't, mm, he's not all that great. And so Paul does this speech of character where he does this bragging about who he is and so forth and so on. Uh, and he says throughout the whole speech, I'm talking like a fool. I'm talking like a madman. I'm talking like an idiot. Um but you forced me to do it. Uh, he, he reasons with them, and then he is going to show that it is not our accomplishments, it's not our bragging on the strengths that we have, it is actually our weakness that shows forth the grace of God, the strength of God. And so as we pick this up in chapter 12, you really have to go into chapter 11, uh, but we're going to pick it up in chapter 12. He says... Boasting is necessary, and of course he's in this speech of character where he is making a fool of himself. He is talking in a third person about this guy who's bragging on himself as if he's, a, as if he's an idiot. Though it is not profitable, but I will go on to visions and revelations of the Lord. And the Corinthians are saying, ah, oh, finally we get to something, because Paul had talked about his beatings, his shipwrecks, his... Uh, his being without, his being destitute. And they would say, Paul is talking about all the wrong things. These are not the things that you brag on. And he said, but I will go on to visions and revelations of the Lord. And you know, sometimes as I think about it, we in the Christian faith, we want to talk about, oh my, how I have excelled in Bible study and how I've excelled as a student of scripture and how I've excelled in evangelism and I have done this and I've done that. And you know, our, I don't know if your church does this, but we do at our church. Southern Baptists do this. We have an envelope system. We put our offerings and our tithes in there. And on the front, it's got all these things that you check off. Um, did I read my Bible this week? Did I visit anybody this week? Did I evangelize this week? Did I do this this week? And we got this checklist. And it's almost as if like, okay, well, I've done this, 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 and this. So I must be Johnny Christian. Uh, I'm a good guy. Pat me on the back. I've done great. And uh, we measure ourselves by that. And Paul is going to be talking about how that is wrong. Um, he says, uh, he goes on to visions and revelations of the Lord. And everybody's saying, woohoo, finally we get to something we can brag on about Paul. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, 14 years ago, can we get a little something more relevant than this 14 years ago? Whether in the body, I do not know, or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. God keeps up with this kind of thing. Such a man was caught up to the third heaven. And in most cosmologies of that time, there was the belief that there were seven heavens, and Paul is only to the third. 
And so the, the, the Corinthians would have been saying, he didn't even make it to the seventh. This is the third heaven. Oh my goodness. Paul is worthless. He's no, he is of no account. He doesn't have a list of accomplishments. He doesn't have anything. Only suffering and, and, and surely God would have kept him from these things. Obviously God is punishing him. Such a man was caught up to the third heaven. And I, I know how such a man, whether in the body or apart from the body, I do not know. God knows. And he's saying, I don't know whether this was in the body or whether he had this experience out of the body, this ecstatic experience of means outside of the body. Was caught up into paradise. Oh, now we're getting somewhere. And heard inexpressible words, which a man is not permitted to speak. Well, I know this guy who had got caught up to paradise and he heard all of these things, but you can't talk about them. On behalf of such a man, I will boast. I will brag on that guy. But on my own behalf, I will not boast except in regard to my weaknesses. For I uh, do wish to boast. I will not be foolish for I will be speaking the truth. But I refrain from this so that no one will credit me with more than he sees in me or hears from me. And there's the thing. As we look at Paul and we look at his accomplishments, he, here is one who has accomplished probably more than any other evangelist or missionary that has ever accomplished. And yet he says, I will not boast about the things that I've done. And it is almost as if within the Christian faith, it is a, what have you done for me lately, lately kind of thing. Um, have you served me lately? Have you done something for me lately? And Paul says, it's not about that. It is about our willingness to suffer. It is about our willingness to serve. It is about our willingness to be, be without. It's about our willingness to suffer for the cause of Christ. That this is the thing that we brag about, our weakness, not our strength. And whereas we get it backwards, we want to brag about our strength rather than our weakness. Because it is weakness that God's strength is seen. Well, Paul says, I want you to see what I am, and let's look at one another. You tell me what you see in me. I will tell you what I see in you. I will say what I am, and you say what you are, and we'll go from there. Let's don't put up a big list of my accomplishments. Let's look at who we are. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about reality. Let's talk about where we really are spiritually. And I think that's something we all need to do, don't you? that we need to examine ourselves spiritually. We need to examine ourselves and say, where am I really? Okay, so I teach Sunday school. Okay, so I sing in the choir or so I sing in the praise team or so I lead music or so I preach sermons. Okay, so what? Is that anything to brag about? No, it's not. We brag about the weakness that we have that Christ might be seen in us strengthening us, that we might see that in, in us, Christ in us, not our own strength, not our own ability, because it is in our weakness that Christ is displayed. Um, you know, personally, just on a personal note, I am a um, introverted kind of person. Thankfully, someone's mowing the lawn outside. Woo, awesome. <laughs> Forget that for the moment. Okay, I am an introverted kind of person. I am not an extrovert by any means, and I would be the last person you would think would be in a pulpit, would be preaching sermons, would be doing that kind of thing, or that would be doing a video. That is not me. That is not my kind of thing. I am much more comfortable reading books, being by myself, a couple of close friends, that kind of thing. I'm just not out there. That's not me. And so, so how in the world do you, somebody like you, stand up and preach the gospel? How do you stand up and preach in front of people? How do you speak in front of people? How do you teach in front of people? Well, it's not me. It is God's grace, his strength in my weakness that is displayed. It is not my ability. It is God's strength, God's grace, God's mercy that is displayed in my weakness. And that I will celebrate, that I will boast in, because I have no strength of my own. And it's the same way with you and with me. You have strengths to be sure, 
but it is in your weakness that God's glory is displayed. Not in your ability, but in your availability. That's where we find God's grace. Hey, listen, we've got more to cover. We've got a lot to talk about with Paul and his thorn in the flesh and how that is furnished faith. We'll talk about more about that tomorrow. We'll get into that tomorrow. I look forward to that. But right now, I pray that you know that I love you. I do. And I'm glad to be out of quarantine. I'm glad to be back in, in my office. I'm glad to be back in church. And hopefully we're going to start back up this Sunday with worship and Sunday school. And we'll go right back into stuff this Sunday. Um, I'll let you know more about that uh, this week. Uh, I'm communicating with our deacon body at Troy First Baptist. And most of them seem to think we need to go start right back up. Uh, we'll probably do social distancing and block off some rows and that kind of thing in church uh, for worship and, and, and in Sunday school. And hey, listen, we have masks. We have all of that available. And if you want that, great, do that. Um, my personal experience is you can hide from this virus, but you're not going to avoid it forever. Maybe if you're lucky and God graces you, you won't. But I was as careful as you could be. I still got it. My wife still got it, um, and I pray for you. I, I don't want to make light of it. I don't, but listen, I think we need to come together. I think we need to be together in worship. We need to do those kind of things. We need to worship together, pray together, and be together, and we're going to take all of the necessary uh, uh, precautions that we need to take. We'll do that. So listen, I think we're going to be back in worship this Sunday. Um, I'll let you know more about that tomorrow uh, when I hear from everybody. Uh, I think that's what we're going to be doing. Uh, I hope so. I think we need to. And I'm looking forward to that, uh, getting back with you guys. Um, listen, God loves you. Mm, and it's more than you could possibly imagine. He's given his son, Jesus Christ. You might have forgiveness of sin, eternal life, <laughs> and joy indescribable right here and right now. I pray that you know that. Hey, listen, till tomorrow, God bless you.